Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. The success of the high-speed Mosquito was partly due to its lightweight composite construction, often made out of different types of wood. Another reason for its success was the aerodynamic design. Ron Bishop and his team concentrated on making sure that this was a very slippery design, very, very smooth. However, if you look at a Mosquito, you notice that there are all sorts of holes, lumps and bumps in the mosquito. So what are they for? That's the purpose of this video. Hope you're going to like this video, in which case let us have comments below and let's find out why there are so many holes in the mosquito. So this air intake here with the guard feeds into the carburetor at the rear of the engine. The air and fuel are mixed together and then put through, in this case, the two superchargers before being fed into the Merlin engine. Because the B35 and the later marks of Mosquito had the Merlins with the twin supercharger, it was necessary to get cooling air for the intercooler system. Because if you compress air in a supercharger, it can get hot too hot and can cause problems to the engine. So you need the intercooler. And this massive inlet here is a mark of the twin supercharged Merlin engines. And this will feed into that intercooler. The Rolls-Royce Merlin engine has got 12 cylinders and the spark plugs are driven by two magnetos. This inlet cowling here is for cooling air to cool off those magnetos to make sure that we don't have problems generating the sparks for our Merlin engine. Behind the magneto cooling, we've got another cooling input. This is used for the cooling air that's required for the electric generator. That generator is required for generating electricity, for the instrumentation, for the navigation systems, everything else that you need in the cockpit in order to fly a modern aeroplane. On the fighter bomber version, one of the most obvious things to see in the nose is the four Browning 303 machine guns. Underneath them, however, down here, there are four other holes. These are for the muzzles of the 20 millimeter Hispano cannon. The cannon themselves don't live here, but rather they are in the front bomb bay. Why? These cannons are quite heavy, particularly if you add in the ammunition. So they're back in the bomb bay, pretty much under the main spar to make sure that they're near the center of gravity. One of the very important things you have to have in a liquid-cooled Merlin engine is a decent radiator system. The water glycol needs to circulate through the engine and then be cooled by the radiator. Not only that, you also will need to make sure that you have an oil cooler radiator as well. On an aeroplane like the Spitfire Mark 9, you actually had a radiator slung underneath the wing and this would generate quite a bit of parasitic drag. The designers of the Mosquito, on the other hand, came up with a totally different solution. Rather than putting the radiators under the wing, they embedded the radiator into the leading edge of the wing. So between the fuselage and the engine, you had a radiator input, and that covered both the cooling of the engine and the oil cooler as well. The net result is you've still got an aerodynamically efficient shape and you don't have the parasitic drag of some external radiator. There was also another advantage in designing the radiators this way as well. The radiator outlets exited underneath the wing. Now the air leaving the radiators was still quite hot and therefore the effect of these exits was to generate a small amount of forward thrust from the radiator exit. Those radiators also influenced one of the other obvious holes in the Mosquito, which is the exhaust 
of the Merlin engine. The original design of exhaust for the Merlin for the Mosquito was a ducted system, but that was fairly soon replaced by another system known as a saxophone system. Eventually, however, they settled on using fishtail type exhausts, similar to that which we're familiar with on the Spitfire. However, those radiators projected beyond the leading edge of the wing and that meant there wasn't enough space up here for a fishtail exhaust on cylinder six. So they had to Siamese that in to cylinder five. Hence, on this particular mark of Mosquito, with the single stage Merlin engines, there are only ever five fishtail exhausts. Aircraft design is inevitably a matter of comp compromise. The smaller the wing area you have, the greater the danger of stalling, the greater your takeoff speed has to be. The bigger the wing, the more lift, the more induced drag you're going to get. You're always trying to balance these factors. Personally, I think Ron Bishop and his team got the balance just about right. Because in the first few years of the war, the Mosquito was the fastest aircraft in the European theater. Despite the holes, it was a beautiful aerodynamic shape. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've given it a food for thought. Do come down to the museum and you can have a look at the mosquitoes, all three of them that we have here, and have a look at how they're designed. Check out our website for opening times. We'd be delighted to see you. See you at the museum.